Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see everybody again. And it's a privilege to be able to open the word again with you. We've been going through a little bit of a theme like uh, recently. Originally, we're, we're going over a title, call it what it is, and move on. And then we're, last time, we we're talking about call me by name that I may hear. <laughs> and today, I'd like to title it called to learn that I may follow, called to learn that I may follow. So first to hear, uh, first we need to hear and that so then we can learn. And we, we can all remember the story about Samuel and how he was spending time with Le Eli. And we remember what he said in Samuel there when he'd heard this voice talking to him, calling his name. And he listened. Uh, Eli told him what to say. He said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So that's the first step to be able to learn, is first we need to listen. So, um, let's turn to Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20. Because it's important, first of all, we recognize who it is we're learning and listening from. Are we learning and listening? from the right person in the first place. He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. <laughs> so there you have it. We need to make sure that we find ourselves in company that is going to help us improve in how we conduct ourselves, what we learn, and so that we can uh, put our lives into a good practice for the Lord. Let's turn to the New Ch Testament now in Galatians chapter 5. You were running a good race who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth. That kind of per persuasion does not come from anyone who calls you. A ye little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion will pay the penalty, whoever he may be. So this is an example of making sure that if we do find ourselves in, in good company, that we also make sure that we recognize when things are, are not going right and there's things um, in the way that is going to cause us from learning properly. If there's, if there's yeast in there, then, it, then it's not good. Um, and we need to make sure we're mindful of looking out for the right things to learn from the right people, not just finding the right people. <laughs> Always make sure that when you're learning from um, someone, that you double check what you're, they're teaching you from the Word itself. Pray about it. And, and that way, the Lord will be able to confirm what He's trying to teach you through other people as well. But I'd like to turn, more importantly at the moment, to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. It says, For this reason I am sending to you Timothy, my son whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. I'll read it one more time so we think about this a little bit. For this reason I am sending you Timothy, my son whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. So who is writing this? It's Paul. Is Timothy his son? Is, it, is he his blood son? No. However, we find him calling him his son. Growing up, I had many people calling me my, uh, their son. They say, how are you doing this morning, son? <laughs> um, it's actually a, a very um, respectful and nice thing for the right people to say. It shows they care about you. Um, but in this, in this case, 
we have uh, Timothy, a thriving young believer here, here, a servant of the Lord, and he is calling him his son. But why, why his son? Well, there can be a few reasons for this. It's because, one, because he really cares for him, as though he is his son. But also, Timothy was a young man learning from Paul himself. Often, and this isn't always the case, but often children will develop certain characteristics and likenesses to their parents. And even if somebody isn't born um, by blood as their, as, their, as their child, even adopted children, if they grow up in that family, can learn um, the same characteristics, mannerisms, and personalities as, as the the parents who have adopted parents who have chosen to raise them and care for them and love them and it, it's a it's a lovely thing to see that um, it's not always the case though that you'll find children following in their parents footsteps we read about generations of different kings there's a good king there's a bad king there's a good king there's a bad king they all have different characteristics um, so it's not always set in stone that children are going to follow good examples or even that children are going to be given good examples by, by those who are, in, who are entrusted to their care. However, what I'd like to focus on here a little bit with you now is think about this, this lightness to learn from. Have you ever wondered why the Bible is so big? <laughs> ever wondered why, why is it so thick? You know, God in the beginning, he said, let there be light. And with just those few words, a powerful source of light was born, so great that if the earth went out of balance right now, and drifted towards the sun, it would, it would just go into nothing, vaporize into nothing almost immediately. A powerful light, a magnificent light of lots of energy and power. And that, he created that in a few words. He created each one of us in an intricate way where our, our chemical balance in our body and the physical form of our bodies enables us to stand, enables to co us to communicate in ways that other creatures can't even. Why would he not just engrave this in our minds in the first place? Why would he have not just given us the verse, John 3.16, that most people already know, for God loved the world, he sent his Son, so that whoever believes on him will not perish, but have eternal life. If God wanted it, us to learn from that one verse alone, or even a one story alone, a single chapter, he could have made it so. But he gave us a whole book. <laughs> Why? Okay, so you say, well, people may, people who, who are doubtful, they're going to want to see a, a number of ways to prove that these events happened and that they're not contradictory in any way. Okay, that's a good point. But there's lots of other good points too, and I want us to think about one particular today. Is... What about all the characters in the Bible? What about all the people, all the stories? You know, um, what I'd like to challenge you with today, to, once you leave here, this is more important than what I'm telling you now. What I'd like to challenge you with is when you go home, I'd like you to think about is there any character in the Bible you relate to, and why? 
Is there anyone in here you can relate to and why? And I'm pretty sure as soon as you start looking, if you don't already know, some of you probably already know, oh yes, I know, I'm, I feel like I'm like David or Daniel or um, Joshua or Boaz or Ruth or Naomi or you may know somebody you already relate to. If you don't, I really encourage you find somebody and it won't take too long. Because what I've found is there's more than a dozen characters in the Bible that I can relate to for different reasons. There's things that characters have done wrong. I can relate to their errors. Made the same mistakes. There's characters I can relate to because of their personality. I see why they are like this. I see why they struggle with this. Moses complaining to God, but I am slow of speech. I feel like that a lot of the time. I really do. And I'm sure you all know why. <laughs> I struggle to form sentences sometimes. So what did he do? He gave Aaron. There's so many people in the Bible that you, you'd be able to relate to. And it, you do, it's not even gender based. I find myself relating to, to some of the women in the Bible. Yeah. Some of the way they feel. Some of the stories that they have. It's relatable. God gave this to encourage us, to make us feel, uh, make us realize how real everything is for everybody. And then, not only that, once you see the person and you read about the person whom you can relate to, their character that you can understand, their, their reactions to certain situations you can um, sympathize with, once you're able to do that, you can then see how they uh, respond to the whole situation. Did they do it well? Did they not do it well? Can I learn from how they did it or can I not? So there's people in our lives, not just in the Bible even, there's people in our lives today around us. Others who care for us, who may be not even in our direct family, who, who we can learn from. There's people back at home when I was living in Liverpool who I felt a really good connection with, who weren't direct family, who I learnt a lot from um, over the years, who encouraged me in different ways that I didn't necessarily get from some people you'd maybe expect. And the same here when I moved to Canada, the exact same thing. I find people encouraging and, and to people to learn from, realizing people that are maybe not the best people to learn from and trying to, to, to navigate through all of these different personalities and characters to realize what is giving the best example of who. Who, who is giving the examples that we need to follow? And Paul, I've closed it again now, but Paul was given his example of himself, not that he was built being big-headed in what he was saying about what he was doing. He was basically saying, look, I'm just following Christ and you've seen me do it. Now you do the same. Learn from what I'm doing and you do the same. So what characters do you relate to? Um, I'd like us to turn to Matthew chapter 11 together. This is Jesus speaking. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me 
all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So there's a few things in these verses that we can just consider in this moment together right now. The fact that he says, no one knows the Father except the Son. Yes, Jesus knows the Father. Why? Because he is like the Father. He, he is like the Father. And to those whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Who would he choose to reveal him to? The people who want to learn. The people who want to open up the book to learn about him. God loves us so much that he gave us a, a choice to decide if we want to be in a relationship with him or not. Do we want to learn from him or not? He could have engraved this in our mind from the moment we were born. He had the power and the capability to do that, but he didn't. Because he wanted us to read it. He wanted us to choose to read it when we wake up. To read it when we're at work. To read it when we go to bed. When we're at work, I mean during lunch break. <laughs> Just clarify. Choose a time that you're going to read, to learn. Learn from those characters that are, you can sympathize with, that you can empathize with, that are like you. See how they, they did um, handled everything. And he has chosen to reveal. The, fa the Father will be revealed to us if we choose to open and learn from these things. And then he says to come to him, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Where does the rest come from? We know through our salvation, know that we're saved by grace through what he has done for us. That's the first step to consider for our rest. Then take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Hang on. Take my yoke upon you. I thought he had a difficult yoke. When we read about the New Testament here, and even some of the prophecies in the Old Testament about what Jesus went to suffer, I thought his yoke wasn't easy. I, I thought it wasn't light. What is, what is he saying here? He says to learn from me. It's not that what he went through was easy. He says learn from me. Learn and watch. Even in all of these things happening, I am gentle and I remain humble. Life is difficult right now, Jesus could say. But yet, I choose to be compassionate. I choose to help those who can't help themselves. I choose to put what I'm, what are my difficulties are aside to help other people's difficulties. And you will find rest for your souls. Why? Because in helping others, we find contentment, we find joy, being able to give. We see it, we see it um, so much in, in all you wonderful people here, all the kindness you show to one another and the things you do without being asked. And, and it's not that, it's not difficult sometimes, but you make it look like it's easy. Why? Because you care. Let's turn 
back to Genesis. And we're going back to our friend Jacob here that we've been reading about. Jacob. Genesis chapter 29. Um, starting at verse 16. Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older one was Leah. And the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah had weak eyes, but Rachel was lovely in form and beautiful. Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, I'll work, I'll work for you seven years in return for your daughter, younger daughter Rachel. Laban said, It's better that I give her to you than some other man. Stay here with me. So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel, but they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. I'll read that last verse. Verse 20. So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel, but they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. Seven years, depending on what you're doing, could feel like 40 years, <laughs> or they could feel like a few days. Often, it would feel like the longer time when you're dealing with something difficult. But here, it says that Jacob, it felt like to him only a few days because of his love for her. It wasn't that Jesus' difficult uh, tasks were easy. It's that they were easy because of his love for us. It was easy. He was able to do what he was able to do because he cared so much about us. And it's easy for us to do things for one another when we care about them when we care about each other. They say, don't they, that um, if you, need, you should try and find a, a job you love doing, and then it feels like uh, once you get going, you feel like you never have to, you never work another day again. <laughs> For most people, that's, that's not necessarily uh, something they can uh, <laughs> achieve because food ha and everything has to be put on a plate and sometimes you have to take what you can get to provide <laughs> for your family. But for those people who are blessed to find something they love to do, it's easy to them. It's, it doesn't feel like work because they love doing it. The, the kids here, for example, um, they love working at the barn. And sometimes they were going for a few weeks and they did nothing but uh, cleaning stalls and, and things like that, working hard, moving hay, um, without any sense of real reward <laughs> at the time. Because um, sometimes they'd, be, uh, they'd get rewarded by getting a, le uh, a lesson or a time to ride the horses, <laughs> things like that. So they weren't getting there to get paid, but they were there um, uh, to kind of work off a balance between um, getting some lessons to be able to, um, from their help at the barn. But often the barn gets busy and they don't necessarily get uh, to ride or anything. <laughs> and even on the days when they knew they didn't want to go and ride and all they were going to do was cleaning out stalls, they still wanted to go. <laughs> It did initially surprise me a little bit. But you know what? They wanted to go because they cared about being there, about the horses, about the people who were there. They wanted to help the people who were there. And so so it didn't feel like much of a chore to them. If I asked them to do the dishes at home, it's another story. <laughs> But yet, yeah, going and work, mucking out horses all day is nothing, so <laughs> I'm still trying to f figure that one out. <laughs> but you get the point. Doing something you love means it doesn't necessarily feel like it's hard 
and it becomes easy. It, it's it's a but a yoke <coughs> that is light. It's a light yoke because it's easy because of your love for that task or that person you're helping. And so we'll we'll just finish now uh, with just considering about how are we going to um, how are we going to learn to be like Christ? It's by first of all thinking about what he has done for us and then our love for him should then <coughs> overflow and then enable us to be able to to learn what we need to learn and to show what we need to show to others and help them in different ways um, let's turn to Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I was very thankful for uh, David's prayer at the end there when he was talking about us being the salt of the earth. Because it's very much like that. We are called to be the salt of the earth um, so that the world doesn't lose the f flavor of the good. The good that God wants to see, the good that we all want to see in, in one another. But we are to learn from the one, uh, Jesus himself, so that we can serve in a way that is pleasing. And Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship and so you might leave here wondering okay what is the next step now what am I to do what am I learning from this I'm hoping that you're learning to learn from here find a character that you can relate to so that you can learn how to improve your life just like Timothy learnt from Paul who learnt from Jesus. Ultimately we're all following the same person but sometimes we need one another to help show us how to do that and we can learn that from here. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we believe.